it's in a way, it's one of the biggest questions that perhaps the biggest question there is in science is, is does some kind of supernatural intelligence lurk behind the universe? Is the universe a planned um, entity that, 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 a, that a super supernatural being conceived? I mean, that's a profound scientific question. If it's true, then we're, then the entire universe we're looking at is a very different kind of universe from one where there's nothing behind it. Um, and so it's a very, very deep scientific question. Um, and I think the, the answer is clear, there is none. But I'm, I, I don't write it off as something trivial. I don't write it off as a case where you can just say, um, it's not interesting. Of course it's interesting. Um, it's interesting. A scientist has got to be interested in this, this suggestion that the sort of universe we're studying is a planned, designed universe. That's a very, very different kind of universe. So it's a very, it's a very deep question. It is a very deep question <coughs> because I, I sense, and I'm not a scientist, that the more you discover about the world, the more you learn about the beauties, the details, the intricacies, the way things are interlocked together, isn't maybe a part of you that thinks this can't have been an accident. There must be something else here. It's very, very tempting to say, yes, it, it, everything works so perfectly together. And the, the, for me as a biologist, the complexity of life, the, the enormous panoply of, of plants and animals and forests and birds and insects, everything working together. No, it's, it, it's a huge, beautiful construction. And what, for me, what is absolutely marvelous is that nevertheless, there is a perfectly decent explanation that it did all come about without, without planning. So one of the beauties of it is precisely that we now can explain it, or we're well on our way to, to explaining it without invoking any kind of supernatural intelligence. And it is a great temptation because um, we are so used to the idea, looking at our own machines, looking at things that we've made, like computers and cars and planes, and um, these are clearly the result of design, deliberate design, deliberate construction. And when you look at something like a bird's wing, and compare it with an aeroplane's wing, the temptation is huge to say, oh, they must both be designed. And it was the genius of Darwin to break away from that and say, actually, no, there is a proper explanation. There is a, a, a materialistic explanation for that. Um, and so, so the flip side of, of, the, of the temptation is that when you've overcome the temptation and worked out that it is possible to explain it in simple scientific I, I, I really mean simple because it, the idea, the idea, Darwin's idea is a deeply simple idea. And yet, given enough time, the Darwinian idea of natural selection, given enough time, can build up to prodigies of complexity and beauty and the illusion of design. And that's a, a, that's a measure of the genius of Darwin to see that. <laughs>